in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed so many of us pastors are jumping with truths and realities in the spirit that are potentially supposed to deliver certain level of results but because we are so concerned about dispensing things because we think our value as men of god is tied to new things your value as a man of god is not tied to the new revelations you bring your value as a man of god is tied to how much of the world you understand that you have been able to demonstrate is reality both in your life and the life of others that track record of consistency in results results that are intentional and can be reproduced is God blessing us already? So I want your growth to be very definite. This brother has come tonight expecting certain things to happen. Some of us do not even know what should happen in an atmosphere like this. You know you came to church. You know that the worship team is supposed to sing. You are supposed to participate. You are supposed to pray. You are hoping that apostle will come up and teach. But you, you, you are not even, you don't even know what should happen to you. This is what I'm telling you. Every time you come for koinonia or any ministry at all, expect transformation. Listen, let me tell you this. And I say it without any sense of apology. If you stay under a ministry and under an anointing for a long time and you cannot trace transformation, get out of that place. Get out fast. Don't fight them. Don't insult anybody. But please, off you go value your life because you are giving your time and your life is measured in time i cannot invest five years of my life in a platform a ministry or a place and not have a noticeable transformation i'm still confused five years later as i was before i came there's nothing that has changed about my values it becomes a mockery to you it becomes a mockery to the god that you represent are we together now at least within five years if i don't know the solution i should be able to identify what i am doing wrong that for me the fact that i am now aware that i'm not getting it right is already a revelation for me are we together now i may not know the way out but the fact that i have been brought by light to a point where i know that something must be wrong that is enough awareness to begin to stimulate transformation please don't ever expect your growth and excelling in life to be a mistake. There's no such thing as that. Hallelujah. The Lord has declared unto us that this is our year of multiplied grace and influence. It's not a cliche. It's not, it's not a pressure that we have to bring words. If God doesn't say anything, we, we carry over the word from the last year and continue with it. By God's grace, I'm not one of those people who are under pressure to make sure that December 31st you must bring a word but this word came from the Lord and only those who know how to run with it I pray that what we'll be hearing tonight will really change us hallelujah see before we begin to teach I want to show you how to make the word change you listen how to allow the word to change you just just listen look at me please don't you will write but I want you to look at me listen the dynamics of transformation through the word is this the Holy Spirit, listen, the same Holy Spirit who is at work influencing your life and your mind is the same Holy Spirit who is guiding the man of God as he's teaching. So there's not supposed to be confusion. That's why sometimes you think the man of God is talking to only you because he's been under the, the Bible says, holy men speak as they were moved, right? Their faculties came under the influence of the Holy Spirit. 
and their communications were consistent with the will of God and when that word comes to a recipient like this that word begins to hover around your destiny listen before the arrival of that word your heart your mind was not empty there was an information there are we together there was an ideology there that ideology is what is responsible for the quality of your present life now the word of god comes like a man wanting to ask a woman out but imagine that that woman has somebody else are we together but that person is destructive now the word of god comes give it the figure of a man coming to say would you respond to a more superior proposal you have been mismanaged by your association with this man called the old man the bible calls him right so the word of god comes it's a proposal it doesn't force it on you you are hearing new ideas now between the old ideology and the new one you are the ultimate person who can make the word of god of non-effect are we together or you are the one who can respond do you know what it means to tremble at the word of god it's not just to be afraid but that every time the word of god comes the moment the ideas are superior and excellent and your spirit is at peace with it you replace it immediately you permit it to be replaced oh this is how i used to see life my goodness i never saw it this way now something new has come so how do you respond my life will never move this direction again and you make up your mind that from that time henceforth are we together now if you need to jot down certain resolutions by remember you are not just doing it carnally because you are responding to the word you are not just sitting and say i will do this i will do this no there is an ability that is backing and supporting your decision so we can render the word of god of non-effect in our lives by refusing to allow it change us the word of god hits you and you look at the word that is coming and go back and look at your old idea and because sometimes the old idea keeps us in a comfort zone are we together the new word you are hearing will challenge you challenge your ministry challenge your paradigm kill every excuse you say kai let me just act as if i never knew it so that i will remain there many people hate information because they know information will kill excuses so they don't want to go for knowledge because they do not want to take action pray in one minute and say lord i'm desperate for transformation pray i pray this for my life pray i pray this oh god for my children i pray this for the many who depend on your hand upon my life i pray this for the nations and the spheres of influence that you'll be committing to my hands please pray from the depth of your heart there is a level of clarity and certainty that a man can walk in this is like a spiritual workshop please pray pray from the depth of your heart lord i'm not just jumping at the word i tremble at the word i have understood its power to change me i've been a victim of poor ideology it's rendered god of non-effect in my life is is rendered my destiny helpless and lord i'm on a project an intentional project to conforming to the image of christ oh, oh, oh.
Let me tell you something. Listen to me. There is no man who is born with a transformed mind by default. It's not a gift. Never has it been a gift that a man is born with an excellent mindset. Something we do not know is responsible for our life. Our parents and our loved ones, though well-meaning, have been responsible for some of the tragedies in our lives. They fed us with informations that are not consistent with the paradigm of the kingdom. We were angry with them. We blame them, but now we are reproducing their mindset. You will never receive another result by default. You have to open up your mind and say, no, I suffered this. It must end in my lineage. I suffered this. I've gone through it. My children cannot go through this. Lift your voice and cry in one minute. Say, Lord, I tremble at your word. I tremble at your word. I understand its power to change me. Those outside, make sure you participate. Yeah. Regardless of your geographical location and its limitation, regardless of the mindset that Africa and Nigeria has been known with, the difference between the qualities of a man's life, the difference between the access point in a man's life for the Holy Ghost to use him is his depth of permission to be transformed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. See, the Bible says that we receive with meekness. There is there is an attribute. Listen, we are still praying just one more prayer. I like you to say, Lord, I admit that there is something I do not know that is responsible for where I am. Show me this night. I admit it. I'm not arguing with you. I know I've seen you move in an area of my life. But Lord, there is something I do not know. There is something I have refused to believe. There is a wrong information I have believed that is responsible for my conditioning. Pray, pray, pray. Tonight, Lord, I kill the excuses. I admit that there is something I do not know. Lord, I admit there is something I have not seen. I admit there is an information I have not received. We are standing face to face with our destinies tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel we should pray just one more prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, I don't have loyalty to any mindset that has not helped me so far. No matter how long I've held it, if it's wrong, it must leave me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. I have no loyalty to a mindset and an understanding that is inconsistent with the word of God. Some of us have held on to ideologies for years. 
it was the foundation of our building and so in loyalty to it we do not want to drop it whereas that may be the very thing that is responsible for the limitation of the word of God in our lives hallelujah please sit down God bless you Brothers and sisters, you can handle the keys of destiny and paralyze. I don't care what kind of ancestral whatever. When you find the key, when you find the key, every door responds to a key, not complaining. Every door responds to a key. Believe me when I tell you this. Every door responds to a key. The day you find it and know how to use it, that's the day your Sabbath has come. That's the day your Sabbath has come. the day your Sabbath has come Spirit of the Living God we depend on you you are the only one who can open up the mysteries of the kingdom unto us we want to live like gods upon the earth we want to take our place in life and destiny we want to change the things that we have seen around our lives and environment the transformation in our families our lives are dependent upon the things that you teach us so lord we tremble as your word we tremble at your word we are recipients of your word tonight we are believers our hearts are malleable we have no loyalty to wrong ideologies we are willing to change in the name of jesus christ amen and amen God bless you. That was such a powerful preamble to open up our hearts. We must be prepared to receive the word. Praise the Lord. Now, tonight I'll be teaching in three sessions. The Holy Spirit inspired me to break tonight's teaching. In three sessions, please make sure you are writing or at least even if it's to type it on your phone or you can get the message. So there are three sessions um, the first session I'm going to be teaching us on people. I think it's important we need to understand who people are. I will teach us certain truths about people. Listen, if you do not understand people, you will be humiliated in your life and destiny. A great man, Bishop Oyedepo, was asked and... Um, they asked him the greatest asset in his life and he said people and they said the greatest problem in his life and he said people if you do not understand people you will never be able to fulfill your assignment if you do not understand people are we together now many leaders have failed because they do not understand people many pastors fathers mothers and we the young people our inability to understand people has destroyed our lives in a very great way so I'll be teaching us on that very powerful revelation and then I'm going to be teaching us the second session on maintaining relationships it's a powerful revelation I'll be sharing with us a few keys that I have gleaned from the lives of absolutely phenomenal people and some of the truths that the Lord has opened my eyes to and this will include love relationships and relationships generally and then number three 
the lord inspired me to answer certain questions you know god just put in my heart many questions that many people will be having and i call that session what could be wrong the third session what could be wrong so i put a number of points what could be wrong if nobody is asking you out are we together what could be wrong if every relationship you lay your hands on does not work what could be wrong if your marriage is on its way to being shattered so i know that the lord will bless us tonight in jesus name let's start off media i'll need you to help us on this i want to share with you seven i call them seven great scriptures that guide friendships and relationships because the foundation of understanding people listen please the foundation of friendships in the kingdom the foundation of relationships in the kingdom must be tied to an understanding that is revealed to us from god's word not just understanding that westernization has brought not just understanding that our cultures have given to us and there are seven great scriptures i have found in my own pursuit to understand people understand friendships and relationships that i think will bless us i won't dwell so much there because we have a lot and i really need us to finish this and do so in good time so i'll give you the scripture media when i give you the scripture i will give you the next one so that you help us and then i'll just explain the scripture every one of these scriptures give us guidelines scattered within them are principles that help us to excel in friendships relationships and to understand people praise the lord okay so we'll start off with proverbs um we we'll spend some time in the book of proverbs proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 proverbs 27 verse 17 while you're projecting that our next scripture will be proverbs 17 verse 17 so media please help us proverbs 27 verse 17 and proverbs 17 verse 17 let's look at what it says everyone please read proverbs 27 verse 17 one to read the idea there is is a comparison as iron sharpened iron so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend it gives you a god idea on the kind of friendships you should be involved in are we together now it never says iron sharpened rubber is god speaking to us oh you are in for a, a shock tonight he never said iron sharpened wood that means true friendship must be based on the same material spiritual material psychological material are we together now he says as iron sharpened iron so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend meaning any kind of friendship i'm not just talking of love business friendship social friendship ministerial friendship that does not culminate in a mutual sharpening is a useless friendship as far as the kingdom is concerned this already is a big deliverance for many of us who are under so much pressure to be friends to and with everyone there are many kinds of friendships that don't build us it's taken from us it's stolen from us it's destroyed our lives you've been friends with someone for two years you cannot tell one spiritual advantage of his or her presence in your life are we together the person did not help you know god the person didn't help you discover purpose the person didn't even help you understand life that's a useless friend is god speaking to us tonight we grew up together so what when i came to zaria he was the first person i met so what it says as iron sharpened iron let me stop there next verse please 
17 17 of proverbs then the next one will be proverbs 18 verse 24 i'll give you one ahead i just want to show us seven scriptures that have been the foundations of my understanding friendships and relationships this is a very interesting one let's read it together one to read A friend love it at how many times how many of your friends have done that the ones you call friends destiny friends the ones you claim you can die for the Bible says a friend a true friend can we have amplified please all through let's let's see how we can work with amplified all through if that is possible it says a friend love it at all times in other words a true friend any man you call your friend should be someone whose commitment to you is not dependent on circumstances i'm not talking of love relationships yet although that applies to it a friend loves at all times and is born as is a brother for adversity in other words friends part of the benefits of friends is to be sources of encouragement and lifting it's a terrible thing when a man is in the downside of his life and you look around there is nowhere to draw strength there are so many people in our lives today who are not friends we have entertained them we are wasting our time believing that they are friends let something bad happen to you you will never see any one of them yet some of us will not come to church because of those people yet some of us are now losing the good friends because we want to maintain those people as you are watching this i like you to begin to look at all the people in your spheres of influence who you call friends indeed whether or not they meet this criteria the bible says a brother is made for adversity is there someone in your life today who can see you in the prison and hear that godia was arrested and not just say i don't know the me too we're all workers it's just the church that that brought us together let me tell you something a true friend the bible says is made even for adversity where were job's business partners where were all his extended relatives none of them came around are we together now see this revelation will help you to know where to channel your energy and effort as far as building relationships are concerned because many of us feel that there are certain people you are so committed to and you will allow anything go bad to maintain relationships with them that is leading nowhere they are not friends they may not be enemies but they are surely not friends from the definition of bible are we together next scripture 18 verse 24 of proverbs then the next one will be proverbs 27 verse 6 these are seven scriptures or let's say eight that have really really changed my life proverbs 27 verse okay proverbs 18 verse 24 look at this hello celebrities social people those who rejoice around in the, everybody likes me i just have one kind of spirit listen to what the bible is saying are you ready one to read the read it read it i mean it's not me it's not my book it's in the bible one to read the man of many friends a friend of all the world will prove himself a bad friend but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother listen let me explain what that means for you if your life is not uncommon to drive certain kinds of people that means you don't have values and principles anybody sees the template of their life in you when a smoker sees you he sees something he sees a connection between him and you are we together when somebody who has no value for the things of you are like you know how a universal charger you they, uh, they, they call that, that you can put any kind of phone any kind of battery some of us are like that and we think because everybody is comfortable around us is a sign that we are good friends hear what the bible says you will eventually prove yourself to be a bad friend this is a friend that has no standards 
this is a personality that has no values meaning if you come to church you behave like a christian if you go to a place and they serve good I say drop my own i mean i'm a social i'm okay i'm all right you go to where people are not serious christians you say what's there i mean don't feel bad about this it. all right let's 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 dance to it you seem like you are a friend of everybody the bible says it's a sign that something is wrong with your life because there are no standards something in your life must attract some people and drive other people now i don't mean to i don't mean to insult uh, people and don't feel bad life is in levels but there is a soap that i hear they bath with and wash with listen listen now don't feel i said don't feel bad god is taking everybody in levels so don't feel offended if that's what you use but i'm just trying to communicate something you bath with wash your clothes try to clean out the stains and then in your body too i i respect those who produce that soap if you are working with them please accept my kind apologies but i'm not a doctor but i can tell you this that soap will not give you the best in terms of quality are we together because you and your clothes are not the same are we together now yeah. some of us are like that see let me teach you something this night learn this if you are afraid of being controversial forget about being a leader it takes the courage of being controversial to become exceptional in life the reason why many of us find ourselves in useless friendships friendships that don't make sense is because you want to agree with everybody you you don't have the courage to look at people and say no 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 i love you but this understanding is not consistent with my ideologies so a roommate comes into your room she loves god you love her too but she says let me gist you what happened in judge this weekend hey just sit down and he said, no problem. And while you are just, someone calls you and say, you know that it's time for prayer band meeting. And you say, I'm coming. You see? So to you, you don't see the difference. You can enter and stretch for two hours, shouting till you lose your voice. And, and just call somebody and say, where are you now? He says, I'm in PZ. What, what's the name of that club? Uh, Come and tell me. I don't know it. <laughs> TJ Palace. No, now. Mate or something. Yes is okay i know you used to go there no 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 for evangelism not for i know you go there for evangelism are we together men with no standards men who are afraid of being controversial this, these are the kinds of carelessness that stop certain people from being mightily used by God. People cannot gist about you and say, no, 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 when it comes to this one, just forget this person's standard is high and clear. Many of us are ashamed of defining our standards because we suspect it will rob us of certain people. When you set that standard, that lady you like will have to shift. So you, you patch it so that I can incorporate them. Look, let me tell you, the Bible says, a man who tries to be, have you not heard that love with the father is enmity with the world? You cannot gain everything. You must choose one. So that all-inclusive kind of friendship. Now, please get my idea of friendship. It doesn't mean you frown at others and laugh at others. You, I mean, a friend is one who you allow to influence your life. A friend is one who you are comfortable with with his paradigm and his ideologies it doesn't mean that because you don't agree with someone you hate the person or you don't interact with the person no you are going to work if you're a worker here for instance you know that there are people in your office whose values are not consistent with yours even if they are christians you must have standards 27 verse 6 please proverbs then the next verse will be john 15 verse 13 are you getting blessed already john 27 verse i mean proverbs 27 verse 6 and then john 15 verse 13 now listen to what the bible says 
Let's read one, two, read. Inside and outside. One, two, read. Let me explain to you what that means. The word wounds there means the discomfort from the correction of a friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? The word wound there doesn't just mean after you fight with your friend. It means faithful when, it, when you meet a true friend. One who loves you enough and he can tell you, no, 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 no. Nas, I love you, but the way you are going about this, me and you know that this is not consistent with the word. It will sting your ego. The Bible calls them wound, but it says faithful are the wounds, the pains that you sustain. A friend is even ready to risk his friendship to make sure you excel in life. That's a true friend. In other words, if after telling him the truth, I lose out on the relationship, no problem. But at least, I'm not talking about truth that is cynical. I'm not talking about you coming to blast somebody and make him feel bad and say I'm like that. I say everything raw. Raw does not mean stupid. You have common sense to take it easy and say no, 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 no. Benga, you love the Lord, but Kai, I saw A and B and C. Do you think it's alright if you do something about it? It may sting his ego. Are we together now? But, he says, faithful are the wounds of a friend notice what he called the kisses of an enemy you know what the, this, this these are very these are very powerful linguistic um, expressions you are entering the hole you say apostle of the most high you are the only one i mean look at what you are happening whereas i'm entering a ditch and you are there watching then the friend will kiss you and make you feel happy and go out and say i can tell you this guy is about to die but then he, you immediately you step in in the middle of the command. Ah, Sean, sir, God is lifting you. The Bible calls that the kisses. Some of you, your cheeks is almost red with the kisses of enemies. You are about to die. Nobody is telling you you are doing something wrong. You are in a relationship with five men, and somebody comes and says, "Man, this girl, you have sense. So how are you doing it?" It's called the kisses of an enemy. HIVs at the corner, demons and spirits. All kinds of instruments of ancestry at the corner. It's called the kisses. It was with a kiss Judas used to let people know. The person I kiss, you would think it's an instrument of love. Now in Jewish days, they didn't have a problem. Men kissing men. It was not gay. Are we together? It was, an, it was a culture like they still do in Britain. You know, kiss hands and all of that. So the kisses of an enemy. He said they are lavish, generous. Your prayer life has died, but he looks at you. He's praying you are sleeping. And he says, we are rising. That's the kisses of a friend. You are not going anywhere. But he's saying, we are rising. Listen, my father taught me something. He said, it's better to live with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. When you live with a wise enemy, you will have to be wiser to live with the person. faithful are the wounds of a friend there are people i have challenged and corrected there are pastors that have had the privilege of closeness with them and i have told them you are a great man of god but i think you need to adjust here and here and here and they never come near me again i love them i pray for them there are pastors who i love sincerely but they will never come upon koinonia pulpit. I love you too much to let them preach. Their vulnerability and their lack of standard is too bad. There are some of you, any man of God you see who comes to town, just because he gave prophecy or he gave a revelation, you say, please, I, I think that you, is that how much you love your people? The kisses of an enemy. You finish a ministration and someone comes to kneel and say, Abiodu, in night. Somebody sent me a very interesting text. You know what the person said? He said he wanted to sow a seed into Koinonia. And he said, man of God, you are the only one who is raising disciples in Nigeria. He said, other, listen, listen. He said, other men of God are, what, what did he even say? Other men of God are just raising money. That's the, 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 the kiss of an enemy. How could such a man with the mighty work God is doing 
I mean men and women who have pledged their life in conveniencing themselves to see the kingdom advance. Some of you, as, as ridiculous and sarcastic as that statement is, you like it. You will embrace it and live in that deception. How could you be so deceived like that? It's called the kisses of an enemy. You preach misquoted scriptures, said a lot of things, did a lot of things, insulted people in the process, allowed your carnality to override the stage. And at the end of it, your friend looks and says, my brother, what happened in today's meeting? It's called the kisses of an enemy. Please listen to what I'm saying. You must begin to respect people in your life who love you so much, even with tears in their eyes, they can tell you the truth. They will guide you into the path of truth. Now, I'm one person who by nature, surprisingly, did you know that all this shout, shout you see ends on stage here? It's because of the apostolic anointing. As a person, I am incredibly soft. You will be amazed. Some people think I'm not emotional. I am. Are we together now? Go ahead. Look at you. are laughing. You can't believe it. You better believe it. Those who are close to me know. But I can laugh with you one moment. And while we're in the middle of a celebration, you violate a kingdom principle and I look at you and I see how many other people will be misled from that paradigm. You are going to receive it right there. Are we together? You, that change is important. So if you love your destiny, you will love me. Some of us hate anybody that can correct you. Now, I don't mean in anger, but somebody that has the courage to say, my dear, listen, I think you need to work on this. You, you were calling and talking with someone. You just told a lie. You lied that you're in Kaduna. If you don't like him, say you don't like him. Why say, uh, officer, I'm in Kaduna? And then you laugh and say, ah, you are smart. You are not smart. It's called the kisses of an enemy. And listen, 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 listen. A friend who partners with you to do evil will do evil against you. Pick the phone and lie for me. The day it collides with her own personal interest, you'll be shocked. Next, we have a lot to do. I mean, this is an appetizer. We're about to lift up. John 15, verse 13. Then you'll go to Luke 6, 31. That's, that'll be the next scripture. I said 7, but I'll, I'll give you 8 technically. John 15, verse 13. Please write it and look up inside and outside. Those outside, are we together? Say Amen. God bless you. Okay, let's read. One to read. Uh huh. The Bible says the apex of friendship is sacrifice. I'm giving you the interpretation of all this English. The apex of true friendship is sacrifice. How much you are willing to inconvenience yourself if need be to see the other party excel greater love had no man than this right it says that a man laid down sorry i'm, I'm not i'm it's from my mind that's why i'm not consistent with this but that's what king james says what i'm quoting greater love had no man than this he said that a man laid down his life for his friend listen anybody you claim to be a friend who cannot inconvenience himself or herself no matter how little for your welfare is a bad friend in fact it's an enemy you love yourself you are singing koinonia songs and all of a sudden your mother said please call me and you say please can you help me with your phone and say please i'm tired of this kind of thing i suffer and i walk i get recharge card they are prophesying on everybody in koinonia receive for yourself that's a bad friend you were rejoicing together but your mother sends an emergency call and the person cannot allow you to take advantage of 50 naira. Listen, listen, listen. Be very careful. Greater love had no man than this. You are coming down from a bike and you found out that ah, you misplaced your wallet and your friend too came down from their bike and he's going. He said, I'm going. He said, sorry. It looks like there's no more. He said, mm, no day. Just finish your thing there. That's a bad friend. You may laugh about it, but the friend is already giving you signs. I am so addicted to my interest. If it means killing you, I will. That's the message. 
this even is a deliverance for love relationships there are people who claim they're in love now is is valentine there are brothers who will give flimsy and stupid excuses on sunday you know why because they are not willing they don't want anything to touch them at all there are certain brothers you can buy me a shoe but you cannot buy a lady you claim you love so much you want to buy spend the rest of your life you are a liar you are a hypocrite you are not doing it because of honor greater love had no man than this look at your circle of friends look at what has left you to maintain that relationship and you will know if you are a good friend look at what has left them to maintain your relationship and you will know sister if you look at the life of this guy you are shouting around he, he, his, your laptop is his uh, um, picture everywhere right and you cannot see traces of genuine sacrifice not sacrifice that the validity period is on the altar sacrifice that is genuine see let me tell you one of the indices we're going to talk on that to know a very good guy is see how he responds to people who are not necessary in his life are we together look at the way the guy responds to people who he does not need in his life it tells you the true way he, everybody looks nice if you can see what you will get from somebody the way he responds to a cleaner who cannot add anything to his life the way he responds to a restaurant waiter who cannot add anything so when he's looking at you and kneeling down say this way my dear think well see how he just insulted the waiter and say sorry my temper i love you come and sit down he, what he's telling you is for as long as i need you you will get this response but the day i do not need you that's what you are going to get the default behavioral pattern of people is revealed when they are talking and interacting with people who do not add to their lives everybody can fake it when you are looking for attention or a gift but the way you respond to people who mean little to you is god blessing us 6 verse 31 please luke 6 31 then give us um give us proverbs 13 20 media this is for you please after this now give us proverbs 13 20 and first corinthians 15 33 i join two of them together because they are the same thing that's supposed to be the last set of scripture but they are the same thing really in different ways proverbs 13 20 and first corinthians 15 33 let's look at luke 6 31 everyone please read one two read Oh, come on. Let's read like able-bodied people. Want to read. Listen. This is another idea on kingdom friendship and relationships that God is saying. He's saying the same way you want people to treat you. Please listen. He says, do to them likewise. Sister, all the guys you are parading around and just playing around with and you are happy the way they are clashing and fighting themselves the bible says the same way you want people to treat you is the way you treat other people i have learned as a person never to do to people what i know i will frown out if it were done to me now it's not easy it's easier saying it than doing it because sometimes many things are unconscious but you must have a determination never delight yourself doing things to people that you will frown out if it were done to you we see the way some of our mothers treat the house helps in the house yet that house help is somebody else's daughter are we together now yeah we see the way some of us treat other people you see the way we pastors treat people right and then we do not want the same thing happening the bible says as ye would that men do to you i know what i want men to do i want people to honor me and honor what i represent i want people to trust me i want people to find a friend in me i want people to pay attention to the truths that i bring because i believe that they are communications of the spirit and i want people to believe in me and believe in the ministry 
and because i want that i will never take my mouth and be running another man's ministry are we together now yes i'll not open my mouth and be calling pastors fake or do no 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 i leave every judgment to god i will challenge ideas challenge ideologies that are not consistent with the word of god but i will do to men as i would want them to do to me i don't want any man coming and trivializing the grace of god upon my life so i make it a point of duty to honor everyone i don't enter a meeting and see men of god seated and now here comes apostle joshua selman and i rubbish them and make it look like everything oh nas benga abiodun shahoma nas all these things people are saying you are just teaching nonsense now sit down no i don't want that done to me and so i would not do that to anyone it's amazing how people hate the things they do to others they will not be able to survive one ten of the things they engineer to happen to others For instance, you are in a relationship with a brother and maybe you were supposed to have an appointment and he could not make it. And let's say he was careless, he didn't let you know, he wasted your time. Hear what some of those bad friends say. See, show this guy. I've been telling you, show this guy. Whereas that same lady will be in a relationship and something little will happen and she will come back boiling. Listen, don't you ever do or advise people to do things that you know you will not want for yourself or for your loved ones I want my children treated well and I treat everybody's child properly you never see me stand and say oh you are this your your clothes are this you are smelling you've not taken your bath no 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 I don't want anybody doing that because everybody we are all we are all products of our environment I don't know what people have gone through we are all seated here as our faces are different so are our challenges and i always want to make sure that when people see me they have they have this idea that this is somebody who genuinely loves you and is committed to your growth next verse proverbs 13 verse 20 a big key write it and please look up one to read he that walketh with the wise shall be wise it says what but a companion of fools shall be destroyed he that walks with the wise the bible says shall be wise why because friendship is a platform for mutual influence you imbibe people's ideologies so it says if you find yourself walking with wise people It says you will also be wise but when you escort people who are foolish they don't know where they are going you look at a lot of group and, and and i need to tell us this because this includes physical friends social media groups are we together any organization of people who are going nowhere you should have no business with some people just come and meet you and say let's start a club the name of this club is is those who i mean all work and no play makes jack a, a dull boy let's create a club we rest on saturday we are just happy enjoy our lives what is the work you are doing that justifies that rest you don't know they say oh yeah register you now register collect form collect your id card you are in all kinds of useless groups that are not adding anything to your life i'm a member xyz club what do you do on saturday we rest how old are you 21 you are joking you are really joking are we together now there are all kinds of groups associations and body of people you should have no business following the bible says he that works with the wise you have a friend that maybe you are roommate or workmate or or whatever it is you are together in the night while you are sleeping he can tap you and say my brother i've noticed two three days you've not prayed i heard you saying a lot of things about issues in your life why don't you pray and say i've been feeling weak he said don't worry it happens let's pray that's a wise friend somebody who you don't want to come for koinonia i just said i'm tired i've been waiting nothing is happening i said today may be your day that's a wise friend are we together someone who sees you hug a lady 
and says you've been hugging ladies but Kai, today's hug is serious are you ready for a relationship or is lost which of them so that we'll know how to help you say me too i don't know so yeah let's go and pray that's a wise friend are we together not one who allows you until it backfires on you that's a wise friend people come around your house and you don't have money you run and go and borrow money you borrow ten thousand naira buy them juice shortcake and say everything say look this place we are rich in this place a wise friend calls you and say but is he wise to borrow money and you are just spending on consumption don't you think he, he will just do what you have if what you i mean tomorrow you can rise that's a wise friend you borrow 150,000 to buy a phone and your friend says no return the money be grateful with what you have god will help you that's a wise friend are we together now you are loving a guy who is going nowhere the friend calls you and talks sense to you and say we have all seen this brother we, we see his ideology where he's going he doesn't love god he's not under authority he doesn't listen he's a god of his own you see his temper he's not even born again and you sit down and say maybe i was carried away age is not on my side that's why i'm being sincere with you and the friend says i know i understand that pressure let's pray together that's a wise friend who will you call a wise friend in your life today When you are about to die, the person says, fire on, and you crash. That's not a wise friend. A wise friend is not a friend that you sit with and be gisting and gossiping about people. From the person is cooking, you are gossiping. You finish cooking, you leave the place there, you are still gossiping. It's evening, you say, God, let's water this whole thing down with one nice movie and just rest with Jared, this life. Sir. That's not a wise friend. Because the friend is eating up your time, though sincere. Is God blessing us? He that walks with the wise, I will never walk with foolish people. I mean business about my destiny. There are so many pastors who have met me. Apostle, I want to be your friend. And I don't reply to them. I don't have a problem with them. I really love them, but they are not wise friends. I have seen the way they do ministry. Are we together? I've seen the way they manipulate people when they, they, a, a ministry has needs. I've seen them do a lot of things. I've seen their attitude towards ladies. They don't care. You can come to the person's house and, and see a lady in the night lying down loosely and carelessly, warming in me for him. No, 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 no. I don't want that kind of life. I plan to go far. My success is intentional. Of course, I love them. We will interact, but they will never be my destiny, friends. Never. Are we together? He that walks with the wise shall be wise. Give us the last scripture, please. Thank you, media. First Corinthians 15, verse 33. It, it says almost the same thing in essence. Please write it and look up. One to read. Be not deceived. Evil communications. Do what? Corrupt. Please amplify it. Amplify it. Amplify it. Let's hurry up, please. We have a lot to do. Thank you. Are you ready to read? One to read. Read everything. One to read. Communion, associations, corrupt and depraved good manners and morals and what? Look at this. The New Testament interpretation of, of what we read in Proverbs. That means I can be a well behaved person. I love God, but my association with somebody else can start altering my values. Let me tell you how you know that things are going wrong. The things you used to frown at, you now become silent over them. Progress. Are we together? On a very good day, you are somebody who over certain things, you would say, mm -mm 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 -mm, God is faithful, but Kai, this one. But now, the devil is softening you, the influence of friends. A friend comes and says, Bros, Neil, I'm your friend. I'm your classmate. I drink. I'm not saying you should drink, but just allow me use. Let me keep the gulda in your fridge. After lecture, I'll come and take. On a very good day, you tell the person, Don't feel bad. I know that I sound like a fool, but I really am sorry. I have convictions. Please allow me to respect my convictions. I love you. I hope that you see the truth, but please. So you drop the gulda. The next day, 
he will come with another friend and say sorry bros we have come again let's drop it sharp sharp your standards are bending but you don't know you see how the devil deceives people or a lady will come into your room come stroll around I'm not, ladies please don't feel bad I'm, I'm still I'm going to balance everything comes to your room and all of that carelessly and says uh uh it looks like okay go be going for a lecture while I quickly cook for you now I know that things happen we are adults but there are times that you know that which is done out of love and generosity and that even the lady herself did not intend for it to get to where it's going to but you have eyes you have discernment prayer has activated your discernment the Holy Spirit is saying check 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 something you just ignore it are we together now and then one day you return back your money is stolen your phone is stolen the lady writes a letter for you stupid boy you think you can use me and dump me and you all of a sudden find out that the lady you were thinking was a naive small girl can sell you you have exposed yourself to nonsense see let me tell you one of the most disturbing things i see about people is this lack of standards if there's anything i want to use this scripture to teach you is that you will never go far in life it's, it's better to have standards and break them at least even when you are repenting you know what you are repenting to but you don't have standards the bible says a man hear what the bible says that a man who cannot guard his spirit is like a city without walls anything comes in anything goes out and i'll tell you why many of us hate being controversial you don't want people to talk against you hallelujah as god blessed us before we continue pray and say lord i make up my mind to have standards i'm realizing right now that i'm already allowing a lot of carelessness i'm allowing things to just bend please pray 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 lord i receive fresh grace standards don't feel bad if you found yourself compromising standards that's why god put this meeting lord restore me let me have standards i started with you as a man of discipline and standards but i ask for grace i ask for grace let the weaknesses of my flesh not prevail against me i ask you for standards in the name of jesus christ yes i'm human oh god but give me standards standards hallelujah hallelujah now please listen very powerful revelation i want to show you three kinds of people and three kinds of relationships you will find in your life and this is according i'm classifying them according to motives please listen learn this tonight and be wise there are three kinds of people you will find in your life according to motives every man who is born of a woman and is alive today you have these three people in your life and if you do not learn how to interact with these people you will both deceive yourself and you will have unnecessary heartbreaks and pains are you ready now number one the first kind of people or relationships you will have classified based on motives is this number one those who genuinely love you those who genuinely love you in this kind of relationship or this kind of people you are the object of their passion you are the object of their attraction not what you have not where you are going not even your destiny you as a person their commitment is unto you please listen their commitment is not unto you as a pastor their commitment is not up to you as a millionaire their commitment is not up to you as a man or a woman your person you are the object of attraction this represent the truest and surest form of people and relationships on earth today where you find someone who is committed to you as a person not your skill not your gift 
So you are the object of attraction. Look at me and let me tell you a sincere truth. If you find 10 of these people in your lifetime, 10 in your lifetime, you are the luckiest man that has lived in our generation. I know you won't believe what I'm telling you now. Keep rising. And you will find out when you are 50 years, you will come back and say, Apostle, you remember something you said? I say, I remember it clearly. Because I said it out of conviction and experience. It is difficult to find a man, a woman, who will commit their lives to you not your vision you are the object of attraction not your accomplishments and my prayer for you is may that person be your husband or wife because it is not if your husband or wife does not fall into that category honestly you have made it is you have entered into a realm of pain that only the spirit of god will comfort you job was the wealthiest man in the east listen and for that no wealthy man grows wealthy alone he must have business associates and allies political figures and all of that and the bible says when certain things happen to job the only person that stood with him was his wife even her she communicated her frustrations you see cursed god and died but at least she was a wife that stood by her husband Three examples of this in the Bible. We may not have time to go there. Just write the scriptures. First Samuel chapter 18 verse 1 and 3 tells us the story of David. Let, let's, let's, at least let's look at that one. First, first Samuel 18, 1 to 3. The story of David and Jonathan. Right? David and Jonathan gives us a picture of these kinds of people in your life. First Corinthians, okay, first Samuel. Listen, it says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was what knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his soul. Just stop there. Do you know what it means for a man to love you as himself? He has entered it. When you read down what we have to say because of time, he entered a covenant. It was a covenant of friendship. You will hardly find these kinds of people in your life example number two root chapter 1 verse 16 just give it to us media root 1 verse 16 the story of Ruth and naomi an example of these kinds of people and these kinds of relationship i'll read and ruth said when naomi asked and said please leave i can't give birth to children for you now to wait for them to grow so that you'll marry them and here's what ruth said entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee it says for whither thou goest i will go and where thou lodgest i will lodge here's what he says thy people shall be my people and thy god my god may god bring this kind of people to your life another example we may not have the time but i'll just give you is jesus christ and john the beloved jesus and john the beloved the bible says he loved jesus so much when jesus was teaching he would come and lean on his chest like a baby would lean or a sister or brother would lean on the chest of an elder one that's it was not eye service it was genuine when all the disciples deserted him john was there right there with the mother of jesus and he said john behold your mother mother behold your son and the bible says from that day john began to take care of her john loved him passionately brothers and sisters these are the kinds of people you need in your life if you really want to fulfill destiny these are the kinds of people who will be with you if they here today that ah god forbid it will never happen but nurse got a lady pregnant they'll say i know and nurse is it true nurse say yes he said no problem nurse i'm with you 
if we are going before the reporters they will snap me before they snap you if you ever find those kinds of people in your life praise god for them are we together that you hear ah rain just wash my house and they say where are you rain wash your house what happened they stole my car please come and carry my other car and use he said you just bought the car he said what is the car for i love you more than the car come and take it and use it there is one i would divide my house into two i would plead with my wife for us to move and you will stay with us for three months before you get another place friends please pay attention to what i'm saying it's very important when you find these kinds of people in your life no matter how foolish you will look do all you can to keep that relationship with them no matter how foolish preserve that relationship oh Benga, i know that um, i offended you the other time but you mean more to me than this i appreciate your input in my life i know you will be with me and i appreciate you not me oh i'm not a desperate person anybody that does anything i can throw the person you, you better stop all those childish talk there are people in my life today if it means me crawling and rolling on the ground to maintain my relationship with them i will do it it's not too much of an ego because of what they represent in my life are we together i know husbands who are in such a state of passion with their wives if it takes if they offend that woman if it means them starving themselves of food to show how sorry they are because they know they know how rubbish their lives were when that woman came you are listening to me right now god is giving you wisdom that there are people like this who will say your god will be my god man of god a great man of god in this nation years ago had a very serious scandal i won't mention names for the sake of honor it's something that was everywhere but had a great scandal and one other man of god who had been his friend they had grown together that man you know sometimes when you really love god and you find yourself in something that is very embarrassing it can break you it will take the grace of god for you to be restored they had to come together as friends to just tell him look go down to a particular country and just go and rest and have some time with god did you know that that man of god was ministering both in his church because that man of god's church was at the verge of scattering people you know what happens when there are things like this and this man of god came and put his reputation on the line to tell all of people look i know that your pastor did this but i know him he's a man of great integrity forget what happened I stake my reputation to endorse him. That's a friend. That's a true friend. Are we together now? These are friends that you don't have to act otherwise because being with them is like being alone. You don't have to change. These are the kinds of friends that if you are caught up watching pornography, they can enter the room and you can put it and say, this is what I am doing. And they look and say, look, God will help you. I love you. I love you more than this. I know that it's the devil who is trying to destroy you. And together you will cry before God. And they will pray for you. My neighbor has one woman. I'm sure she's here listening to me and laughing. There is a woman that I spoke to her about. That woman is about the most faithful friend I've seen in recent time among ladies. I told my neighbor again and again and I'm still telling her she's here somewhere listening. I said keep this friend because this is a true friend. There was a day that the woman came to her house came to her place and my neighbor was not around. I'm not sure the woman knew I was around. When she, I don't know if the room was open. I can't remember the story. When she entered it, my neighbor was not around. But I was hearing her. She knelt down and began to weep. She prayed there for more than 20 minutes. Oh God, bless my friend. She was crying. She never knew that I was hearing. 
I started crying too for my brother. I said, what is this? This woman can be so true. The friend was not there, but she was praying genuinely. Do you have somebody in your life who can take a day's fast, not for relationship, but to pray and say, Lord, bless Sam. I love him so much. She would never come and see my neighbor washing and just get a chair. Immediately she comes. She would, she, I, I believe she may be older than my neighbor, but she will come and push it aside and insist what a friend is God challenging us my prayer is not that you only wait for friends like that that you make yourself such a friend are we together now because some of us are far from this our idea about friendship is so bad you are far from this this is my goal to become a true friend that I love people above and beyond their being necessary in my life. There are people today who do not add anything in my life, frankly speaking. But most times I spend time following up on their lives. I can travel from one place to another just to be able to see them. How are you? How is your family? They may not even appreciate it, but I want to be that kind of friend. Tonight, you can make up your mind that I must be this kind of friend. I must. At least not to everybody, but to somebody. And the place to start may be in your home or your relationship. Number two, the second kinds of people and kinds of relationships that you will see in your life. Please pay attention. God is taking us somewhere. Those who love what you represent, those who love what you have. Those who love where you are going. Those who love what you represent, comma, what you have and where you are going. Their commitment is not to you. Their commitment is to your gift. Their commitment is to your vision. Their commitment is to your destiny, not your person. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. So these friends, listen. Now, the dangerous thing about these friends is they act exactly like the first category. The only difference is motif. Everything this first category of people who genuinely love you do, they also do but they do it because of a vision they do it because of a gift now they are not dangerous people they are just a class of friends are we together because you are like that to somebody too i am like that to somebody too i'm just showing you classifications of friends based on motives so you come for koinonia and you find a very visionary and impactful ministry and you plunge into the vision you are this category so for as long as koinonia remains visionary for as long as we remain purpose driven you are connected so the person is not your business is the vision are we together now listen let me tell you where these kinds of people are dangerous they are dangerous because they love you and they are sincere but they hope that your diligence and your vision will also help them achieve their own. Are you seeing the basis of their partnership and their participation? They will dump you anytime they find an alt a faster alternative. They are so driven by the vision, they don't care if you die in the process, so long as the vision continues. Are we together now? Most of the people you will meet in your life, hear me? Most, let me give you the let me tell you the truth 85 to 90 percent of the people you will meet in your life they are not bad people but this is it your gift attracted them they will call you names you will eat together you will pray together you will cry together occasionally they will even make sacrifices for you but the truth of the matter is the fundamental motivation their attraction is to a thing not a person 
hear me this is the reason why many relationships suffer we are coming to that you were attracted to a gorgeous beautiful looking lady i mean you just came into koinonia and you just looked at a lady and my goodness you were looking this way but something attracted you and you look and see the lady is trying to hide her face see me looking at her are we together now ah this lady is fine i say big guy saw something ah Benga, come 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 let's talk say i've come now benga after coin i'll be watching all the ladies that pass you see that lady blue the other one she's the one and benga says ah no you have eyes <laughs> now listen 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 there is nothing wrong with that but the point is the object of your attraction what keeps you awake when others are sleeping is that beauty and figure eight there's nothing wrong with that except that there is there is there is serious trouble and serious danger because your commitment is to the shape the form not the person is god speaking to us or you see a guy comes and you admire his dress sense you admire his composure he speaks well he behaves like a leader i say i like this guy I say why say this guy is just a leader wonderful there is a possibility of backsliding are you aware are you aware that i can compromise my values then what happens to my person listen up. their commitment how many pastors move around saying all my members love me they can give up anything for me let the anointing live your life for two months where the people do not get any traceable result you will be surprised Are we together now an example of this were the disciples of jesus before they became apostles they walked with jesus they were looking for vision and a better life not a person their commitment was not to the person jesus do you know even them were suspecting that he was fake i hope you know at the point jesus said who do men say that i am all of them said, you are Isaiah. He said, you, who do you say that I am? None of them could speak. He said, honestly, me, I don't know. I don't know who you are. You are, you are a strange man. I'm close to you. I'm just keeping quiet. But the truth is, I don't know you. You are strange. How many PAs of men of God move around? The men of God keep moving around and think that these are the confidants. Whereas these are the ones who can sell them and destroy them. How many people, a woman who marries a husband, and you hear, or a husband who marries his wife, and you hear the woman talking about her husband and say, Mio, I'm not a fool. I know why I married him. If he dies, that's his cup of tea. She's committed to what? Vision. That vision can be money. It can be anything. The person can die. But if the object of their attraction is still alive, they are committed to it so whatever happens to the person is none of their business so if god forbid if joshua selman is sick and koinonia is moving forward and through it you can gain relevance let joshua selman even die my commitment is to koinonia not him are you seeing that now there are many people whose commitment is to principles of the kingdom not jesus christ their commitment is to principles of prosperity principles of lifting the presence of jesus the things that bring the glory and the person of god is none of their business so they will never love jesus but they will practice the principles of the kingdom they will never be born again but they will tight they will even come to koinonia and say me oh, i'm a non-believer but i believe in tithing they love the principles because of what it delivers to them but they do not love the person number three i said something here they will leave you in a hurry when they find a faster route to their future they will leave you in a hurry there are many people involved in relationships for instance that are like that so you can see a wonderful lady at the time you met the lady you did not know better at the time you met the lady you did not have a job 
at the time you met the lady you didn't have dress sense you were still a villager and so it was easy to connect but as you kept growing you realized that your commitment was not to her person so right now you no longer are proud of her she's now looking like a village girl are you seeing because you are now advancing so you start creating tactical ways to resent her your commitment is not to the person your commitment is to something else let me show you something psalms 55 please let's rush psalm 60 psalms 55 verse 12 to 14 psalm 55 please look up let me show you certain possibilities that can happen with these friends ready look up let's read let's hurry up for it was not an enemy that reproached me please give us amplified 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 today we're working with amplified he said for it was not an enemy who reproaches me and taunts me he said then i might bear it in other words the person causing me pain is not even my enemy i would have been able to bear it he said no you see the one who has hated me insolently who vounds himself against me then i might hide from him verse 13 he said but it was you a man my equal my companion and my what familiar friend when i heard about the rumor i thought it was my enemies i got to a point where i would never believe that it was you who ate with me are we together now he said i thought it was an enemy it's easy that's their work but you how many husbands sacrifice their wives for money are we together they come for a meeting like koinonia and you are together with somebody and in the middle of ministration and everything you get to find out for instance that that person have you not seen uncles who are the ones who tie the destinies of families when somebody dies they who kill the person will come and say you mean he died ah but it was you a man my equal the person i call companion you are the mother of my children look at what delilah did to samson she was the one who walked with this macho man this mysteriously strong man she laughed with him imagine when she would tell him Samson, you know i love you i says, how is it today but she would run to the philistines and say i found the secret we will kill this man i pray for you sincerely listen to me i pray for you that in the course of this teaching god will identify to you certain people who you may not avoid but keep a distance otherwise they will kill you and bury you and go and say your obituary they will kill you bury you a police officer once told me a story of a boy that killed his father he killed his father spilled the blood threw everything away and then he ran and was crying and called people that his father was dead it was later on that they discovered that it was the boy that killed his father why did the boy kill his father some money just came in for the father and he killed the father is it not the brothers of joseph that sold him it's in your bible brother brother same i mean you can imagine same father may not be the same mother but at least same father they grew up together and the brother said kai how do we kill this they threw their brother in a well and you would think it would touch them they saw some people and they said let's make money from our brother look at judas trying to make money of jesus it was you a man my equal my companion my familiar friend we started this relationship together i was happy but i never knew that in your mind you were out to just destroy me number three we have to run the third kinds of people according to motif that you will meet in your life is god giving you wisdom tonight 
those who do not love you nor what you represent but will partner with you to fight a bigger enemy for them listen this third category they do not love you they don't love your vision but they are confronted with an enemy that is bigger than them so temporarily they will come into partnership with you to help them fight a bigger enemy and then after that they will return to their default position listen do you know the pharisees and the sadducees were enemies we all study the bible here is that true do you know that the pharisees and the sadducees never agree one of their chief point of contention was the concept of resurrection are we together but when jesus showed up jesus was a bigger enemy than their personal differences so they came together as a team to make sure they fight jesus to death we never see pharisees and sadducees struggling and fighting during jesus time when jesus dies then their contention continues when paul the apostle shows up they are busy fighting in fact he uses that as an advantage to bail himself out at a point listen let me tell you the danger of this all of a sudden you will find out that somebody who hates you is trying to look for a job and you know the person to give her that job so for that temporary time she will come to you and be your friend for the sake the person hates you but needs the access you have so the whole attention is that other person not you are we together and becomes your friend and in that process you run your mouth thinking you are talking to a friend this is what god is doing can you imagine that this brother asks me out and she's laughing the whole idea by the time that greater enemy is conquered you will now say why did i open my mouth to a wrong person many of us have given ourselves cheap because somebody all of a sudden steps into your life and you say i made a new friend we are just two days but my goodness there's nothing the person doesn't know about me could it be i have seen many i i say this with all humility i've seen many sincere nice and well-meaning pastors sometimes they come for a meeting maybe when i go to minister somewhere and they see what the power of god does and all of that and you know that they are desperate for growth or they are desperate for something and they don't even know me but they are in such desperation for a passion they now send me a text and say ah my covenant brother or man of god i want us to be covenant friends and in my mind i say no 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 i don't want to be your covenant friend i don't know who you are i don't know what your convictions are i love you but you don't become friends like that to solve a bigger enemy to to fight and kill a bigger enemy are we together yeah. when there is crisis in zaria or crisis all over nobody says which church do you attend what do you believe are we together all christians come as one group even if it's a smoker that was born as in he's not born again the fact that most of the guys that fight are they believers some of you self can give them money for we we because they are representing the camp of christians and so at that point this is a boy you will you will say if you see him near your house or with your daughter but because you need protection you will now call him and say ah while they are patrolling they should make sure they come around your place now say ah, gashinera deri, asha you know what that boy is going to do with that money but you give him because momentarily you need that protection the moment soldiers come and take over the place and the next day he comes to knock you will tell him let me not see you in my house again these are the third category of people they hate you they will kill you if they have room they hated barabbas before jesus came barabbas was a thief he was a notorious criminal they hated him and that's why they caught barabbas and locked barabbas so that they could have peace but compared to jesus barabbas became a friend are you seeing that and they say release barabbas for us we know he's a criminal but we so want this guy to die 
if it takes releasing Barabbas, let it be. Brothers and sisters, listen. Especially for those who are leaders. Every one of us will have these three categories of people in your life. They are not necessarily enemies. It's just how they are. They come with different motives. And if you do not have the grace to discern, you will cast your pearl before swine. You will reveal destiny secrets and things about your life to people who do not merit it. This is what many of us have done. Someone comes in your, into your life in 10 minutes. He knows about your father, your mother. He knows what your father did to your mother. In 10 minutes, he has entered your bedroom. You have shown him everything. My father is even supposed to collect one check today. Can you imagine? See, I don't know what is making me just tell you everything. Foolishness. Let me tell you what is making you say it. I know what is making you say it. Foolishness. That's the name. Foolishness. Are we together? Many of us have given ourselves cheap today. There are too many people with informations about our lives that are not necessary. Because we did not discern what kind of people. We did not let them qualify and grow into access to our lives. I don't cast spell before swine now. Let me tell you something. If I call you my friend, then you are my friend in I'm not a difficult person. But it takes standards. There are not many people, especially men of God, that I tell you, this is my friend. I love people. I'm happy. I joke around with people. But I know people that I can sit down and discuss destiny things. It's difficult. We'll go to the next session now. Very important. But I want us to pray. And say, Lord, let these truths that I've had tonight grant me grace that I will not look at people as the same people come with motives let the motives give the access that they will have to my life please pray inside and outside and around please pray Lord I have made costly mistakes because I've thought everyone who comes around is a true friend I have betrayed my trust. I have betrayed secrets that you have committed to my life. I've been careless. Those who love you, they are committed to you. Some of us have generalized people. You don't even know those who really matter in your life again. Everyone you see, you keep them at bay. There are some people that should be so close to you. But you could not discern that these are the people who can die with you and can die for you. You have thrown them away because they don't have money. You have thrown them away because they didn't go to school. You have thrown them away because their parents are not rich. Lord, give me the eyes to see. To know those that I will hold so dear. To know those that I will still be in friendship with. After 30 years, 20 years. Hallelujah. Session 2. Right, please. Maintaining relationships. I want to teach you something very quickly because I need us to finish this. Is God blessing us? maintaining relationships there are many teachings that we have taught about relationships both love relationships and all of that you can make reference to them the mystery of marriage relationship and family life series and then the latest was challenging discussions on late marriage i won't want to repeat myself on these issues you can get the message at the media stand is free but then i want to share with us just three things that i believe will help us maintain relationships there are many of us who don't know how to maintain relationships i'm not just talking of love relationships although it applies to it relationships in general listen even if what is given to you is a gift 
it is maintained by principles it may come as a gift but it's not maintained as a gift it comes as a gift but is maintained by principles and i want to show you certain things now hallelujah tabitha come let me use her for instance the first thing i want you to learn about relationships and this applies also to love relationships in fact it applies majorly did you know why two people can be in a relationship listen please they may be nice people but there's a lot of tension in that relationship it could be two guys who are destiny friends but they they never seem to be able to stay together i'll tell you why number one is the concept of value the first key sorry you're standing with me you should be writing but you'll get it the concept of value write this word down to be valued to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable brothers and sisters there is nobody including joshua selman who can survive any kind of relationship that devalues you i've taught us i've taught us in the in school of ministry and i think i've, I've also taught us here um, i think principles of effective living you can get the teaching that the highest psychological need I want you to cram this and know this for the rest of your life. The highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel appreciated, and the need to feel important. Any man will hate you if you, trunc if you truncate on this. And by man, I mean both male and female. So I'm in a relationship with Tabitha. Watch this. And because of my ego as a man of God or as a public figure or as a leader or a successful businessman I keep creating a body language or communications that give Tabitha an impression like look do you know how many other ladies love me are we together are you blind don't you see the way other ladies may want me to be in a relationship with them it's a privilege that you are around me i want you to never forget that you see i am i am feeding her with an understanding that you are of a lesser value now temperaments different she may i mean temperaments are different they, they differ she may be able to absorb it like that and just swallow it but i'm doing something to her i'm diminishing her self-worth i'm diminishing her self-image are we together now i'm taking advantage of maybe her background i'm taking advantage of her level of exposure i'm taking her advan advantage of her idea about herself and i'm using it to boost my ego the concept of value nobody can work with you in a business in a ministry in a corporation whenever they feel truncated especially in a love relationship you see a lot of fathers, mothers, husbands, young people in relationships. They give that lady an impression that you are not valued. Or the lady gives the guy an impression. When you came to ask me out, there were 10 guys. I carefully selected and I selected you. So you see that kind of irrational idea. And so you give the guy an impression like you were selected out of many. So you better keep being a chaser for the rest of your life because i don't plan to commit myself this is a relationship that is still shaky many ladies like giving that impression when the guy behaves say no problem at least somebody's going to call me this evening and you'll hear what i will tell him so that threat is supposed to diminish the guy to make him look like it was just because he spoke to HOD technical and he spoke to me. That's why I told you yes. Don't think I just respect Nasne to say yes 
on a very good day, if not because of koinonia, who dash monkey banana? An impression. Listen, some of us do it unconsciously, but you have to change tonight. Especially when there are obvious flaws in the lives of the people that you can use. It's a different thing if you are talking against the person and there may be nothing, you are just lying. That becomes foolishness. But there are times that what you are saying may be true and it may have a justifiable basis. Are we together? So, I come to Tabitha and I tell her, I, I used to be a drunkard. I used to be, in fact, I'm even surprised I'm in the church today. And she uses it to say, look, I've been a serious lady with God and you just you just meandered your way into church and you were rescued don't ever think we are the same yes the blood of jesus yes new creation in christ but me and you know we are not the same you see that kind of thing so forever she keeps giving me an understanding i'm managing you never forget a possibility of replacing you still exists it's a terrible way it causes tension you will never be able to maintain relationships like that whether it is a business relationship and all of that one of the things that i have particularly done especially for the heads of department is to make them feel loved and valued they know if not because you know me you can ask all those who travel with me for ministrations most times when they come to receive us sincerely those who do not know me don't even know who is apostle because i just jumped down with my earphone polo and my jeans and all of that most times they may think he's victor or mike or somebody and they're like good afternoon sir then they see them maybe holding my luggage or something and then they don't know who to greet again and they're wondering sorry who is apostle they are trying to be careful can you be that open with people and yet secured in yourself or must you tell them no 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 i lead the way walk behind let them or go forward and then after they are finished with you then i show up say i'm the one wrong understanding that came from culture we incorporate it into ministry are we together now yes value if you are in a relationship here god is asking you a question tonight have you given your partner or your husband not even a love relationship it could be anything business ministry like koinonia have you communicated value whenever people stay close to you whenever people talk to you do you give them an idea that they are important especially when they don't have anything to contribute to your life if i have something to benefit from promise it's easy for me to treat him well because if i don't treat him well i will not get what i want but can you treat everybody around? Some of you see the way I greet some of these are children that come around. You see all of them run and come to hug me. I'm telling you, if you know the way I love these people, I do that because I love them passionately. They don't have anything to give me, whether financially or otherwise, but I love them sincerely. You see the way I greet people. I never look at somebody and I'm looking at his hand. Okay, I'm seeing you holding a brown envelope this way, sir. And then you come and then the way i hug you i say I, I like if we have five of you in koinonia i'll be happy then the other one who says man of god even the transport right now to go down i came from gaskia you don't want those kinds of people value value number two tabitha i use you again you have to be able to give people value a sense of value number two mutual honor the second key to maintaining all kinds of relationships is mutual honor two-sided honor two-sided honor dr mike mudok defines honor as a celebration of your uniqueness not just a recognition of it an open and public celebration of your difference now look up please especially brothers let me show you where you have been missing it unconsciously especially in relationships and this applies to all those who have had some level of influence whether you're a pastor here heads of department and all of that 
because or business people anybody that has any measure of success the position that god has put us tells us to be victims of this we like one-sided honor because we think that one-sided honor creates a potential difference enough for people to see where we stand against the person who is honoring us and so we are embarrassed to show two-sided honor so if tabitha comes right now and then tabitha gets down on her knees maybe, no 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 don't kneel down she you know maybe to say oh man of god i appreciate you i make sure that i leave her there to be clear enough to those who are watching they don't know me but i deliberately leave her there i i enjoy the honor generously are we together now to a point that it becomes a humiliation for her so if it is prayer just a simple prayer that i was to say god bless you it changes to another prayer and i shout it deliberately lord i pray for this and everybody turns ah, ah, who is this guy kneeling down oh apostle one-sided honor you see how we create tensions in our relationships you see how we create tensions in marriages are we together now honor must be two-sided brothers and sisters a man cannot be there calling his wife telling everybody she's a nice lady and looking and saying my wife this is my wife wonderful lady i mean all the things men say she's my this and that and that and then the woman is not looking for an occasion to reciprocate she's just there smiling and receiving it as if the man is a thief standing close to her you find a way of reciprocating the honor are you seeing why people get frustrated eventually because the lady is doing what she thinks is the attribute of a virtuous woman and the man is just absorbing it as a right there are people in this valentine right now for instance is only the lady who is thinking of doing something for the guy we have been drumming this thing since last week valentine is, is um, on sunday but the guy will act as if he doesn't know anything. Also, ah, it's even you know, the way ministry is, guy, this ministry self, honestly. Apostle said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence. Walk, 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 walk. Aside from relationship, what of mutual friends? I've taught the heads of department to love themselves and appreciate themselves. And you see that in their attitudes. They honor one another. If you see Benga treating Nas or Abiodu, you may look and think, ah, ah, why is this guy doing this? Then another occasion will come and you'll hear them. You see the way they walk. Listen, listen. I want you to learn this. Honor is mutual. True honor is mutual. Even when it's obvious that there is a gap, there is a difference, there is a disparity. You must create an occasion to honor them during my birthday last year this um, many of the, the, the children that are little ones that come to greet me when they came to greet me i appreciated them sincerely and when i did they wrote me a letter they came together and wrote me a letter now i'm not the kind of person who will sit down and be writing letters but when i i was so touched and i said to them they came together to do this I had to write them a letter again to reply it and to drop that was my honoring them honoring their idea of value for me there are people who send me recharge card oh man of god you have blessed my life you may not know me and i respond back to them i appreciate what you're doing i truly truly appreciate it every time we meet as leaders most times i begin my my talk with them by saying guys i appreciate you it's easy for people to see what is happening in koinonia and think it's just joshua selman and the anointing upon his life but you are the ones who make things happen in the secret and i appreciate them do you take out time to make your honor mutual or is it one-sided every time you are the one everybody is saying this and that too. oh pastor femi ah you have changed my life pastor femi says are you joking you you don't you think i am just fasting and praying for nothing so there is tension when there is no mutual honor when i honor tabitha 
and she knows that I do it from my heart and I will do it openly. And Tabitha also makes it as a point of duty. When you watch Dr. Paul Enenche and his wife, every time he's talking about his wife, she stands up wherever she is. The moment he's giving an example, she will stand up and remain standing till he finishes. And every time he comes up, if it's his wife that is going to preach, she must be the one to introduce her. How many of you have noticed it? He will come up and say, we're about to receive from the woman of God, not my wife, from the woman of God, Dr. Mrs. Becky and Enche, and she comes up, mutual honor. I want to appreciate my husband, the man of God, and he's there just boiling and sitting down, and he comes up and says, uh, don't mind my wife, let's go to the world. As if, what is the meaning of that? No, you take out time and you are generous enough. Not flattery. But let her know you appreciate. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. Learn this, especially for great leaders. Every idea about your wife is a reflection of what you gave people. Are we together now? Every idea, if I belittle Benga, I belittle Abiodun, or all the heads of departments and all of them there, it will transfer to them. You know why you honor them very much? You honor them because it was deliberate to create the platform. You dishonor me, they will rebuke you because they love me. And they know that I honor, I honor them. Are we together now? You must learn this. If you are embarrassed to honor your spouse, husband, wife, the person you are in a relationship, you are embarrassed. The person cannot maybe... Um, doesn't have that kind of social orientation right the person is not yet rich this and that and that and you are ashamed no that's a shame mutual honor and this must not be what you do in the open you can do it any other way you have a business partner you're working together you may be smarter than the person but you take out time to tell the person look i appreciate you I know that I have brought more money in this, but look at your creativity, your discipline. Hallelujah. As a pastor, you have your assistants, you have people there. One time you come up on stage and you're like, my goodness. Ah, did you hear what Pastor Soso said? I mean, this is a revelation that blew my mind. It's a way. It looks childish, but you are honoring him. He's impressed that he was able to bring a revelation that even his superior was impressed with. Not that you come up and you say, you know, in 93, when God was showing me what this guy was saying, I'm even impressed you've learned it fast. What are you doing? You, it looks like you are endorsing your geoship, but what you are doing is that you are killing the people. We do this a lot in Africa because of this our mindset. I've made it a point of duty to honor the people. Ladies, you don't have to marry first to honor the man God has put in your life. Don't say even God knows. God sees the heart. Men look at the outward appearance. So you have to find a way of communicating it openly. Honor. Mutual honor. Can I use it for one more example? Thank you. Hallelujah. The third key to maintaining relationships is god blessing us tonight now this is very serious i want you to pay attention because i'll spend a minute or two five minutes to talk on this area the third key to maintaining relationships is clarity write it down clarity and definiteness of motives roles and expectations clarity and definiteness of motives roles and expectations this is probably of the three one of the biggest reasons why any kind of relationship will not be able to stand there's too much ambiguity in many relationships no clarity no definiteness of motives listen back to our example i'm with tabitha I am so close to Tabitha. I love Tabitha so much. 
to an extent that if i see any guy even if it is worship team song for next week he's giving her she will notice the frown in my face brothers and sisters let me tell you this if you are close to a lady you've not asked her out but the moment you see another guy with her something strikes your heart your heart is already connecting you see the first way we accept things in africa is denial <laughs> the first way we accept things in africa is denial we deny until the denial makes a fool of us then we admit it thank you are we together now so who is tabitha to me when you see us in the restaurant it's me and tabitha now there's nothing wrong if you have your yes you are friends of course compatibility but brothers and sisters there is an invisible line between general friendship and friendship that is becoming intimate supposedly heading to a relationship are we together now listen listen please write this down and ladies hear this counsel and be happy avoid undue closeness if there is nothing defined happening over a period of time avoid undue closeness if there is nothing happening nothing defined happening over a period of time i counsel ladies and guys and brothers and sisters most and many of the heart shattering experiences of people is because of assumptions who is tabitha to me i'm with tabitha all the time i claim nothing is happening between me and tabitha we talk for two hours during the day one hour in the night 30 minutes before morning are we together now now listen i may not have intended for a relationship tabitha may not have intended for a relationship but the truth of the matter is that the way we are going is becoming clear that we're becoming too close for just general friendship are we together now a lady just comes to hug me and i come back and tabitha now cracks a joke and say eh, i'm seeing all of them i but i know she's not playing she's taking that thing seriously it's already a sign that she's becoming um, i want to say economically committed <laughs> <laughs> she's becoming emotionally committed listen there is nothing you see one thing with ladies brothers let me tell you a very big secret about ladies it's not very easy for ladies to be committed emotionally but when they do they can do it to a fault so you have to be careful there is a level to which a lady becomes so committed to you the day you now summon courage to look at her and say look uh, tabitha i really appreciate this our two years of of coming to koinonia <laughs> every day every time we sit in the same seat but um i think you heard what apostle said in koinonia we really have to talk about this and listen this this thing right now say you know there's nothing abi what do you expect her to say there's something she said, well it's all right there's nothing and then she goes back one hour later you are calling how are you feeling about it my brother you too ask yourself what are you doing oh come on you should clap for me here he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny listen so clarity of motives listen you see another danger of clarifying motives is promise may be looking at tabitha this is the house of god are we together promise is looking at tabitha and he's praying he's discussing with pastor femi i like this lady are we together now 
while that is happening i'm here blocking every space you see what we do sometimes that we don't know because promise cannot be fighting with me we are brothers i will say it we are brothers in the house of god now i'm here and promise assumes that this guy is already there okay i love the lady but i mean the kingdom advances even if it's not me i'm happy because the person in her life so at the end of it this lady does everything graduates says no to every godly brother that has vision and can ask her out waiting in expectation for who joshua selman are you seeing that now and then at the end of it then you now say i think i should start considering a relationship now and she's smiling because in her mind she's saying wow this guy is ready to take this thing to the next level and then all of a sudden some guys even get so bad you keep talking with the lady you keep doing everything and one day you just find out that the guy is already seeing the parents of somebody else whereas every communication with this other sister is still intact nothing changed there was no sign now brothers you may be doing it sincerely but i'm telling us this we have to learn and it must stop ladies are very sensitive and hear me this is the house of god brothers behold your wives wives behold your brothers we are adults there's nothing to hide your wives will come from here largely your husbands will come from here and most of our sisters have been well taught if i say our sisters are not nice people i'm saying i'm a fool because i'm the one who taught them most of the sisters god has helped them do you know that almost every lady that i've spoken to this year are saying they are ready to settle down this year and it's not a lie they really are ready that what does that mean we are human beings it's not about being desperate that means when a brother begins to draw unusually close the sister expects that he knows what he's doing are we together because we have preached this again and again so she expects that he knows what he's doing now the brother has not been able to sort himself out and he's there he's nice now, there are brothers who our problem is that we don't know what we want we don't know what we are looking for we don't even know where we are going you want what is in Amaka to enter what is in Marion, enter what is in uh, Mesitila, enter what is in uh, Tabitha. That's, that becomes your wife. Please, you are dreaming. Please, you are dreaming. That's what you say. So, whenever you are in Koinonia and you hear Tabitha singing, all of a sudden you remember that you've always dreamt of a worshiper. You wake up in the morning with three or four children and there's solid worship going on in your house that's that's a very kingdom paradigm and i appreciate you for that except for the fact that while that is happening you also want a chef you want shahoma to be cooking for you i mean you want a lady who can cook are we together and then after that you also want a lady who is a first class student you see all of these combinations you all want them in one person you, you are joking it doesn't exist In the name of Jesus Christ, it doesn't exist. We are going to pray. I know you are laughing, but I came to pour my heart to really talk to us because I want us to benefit maximally. Are we together? So, Tabitha is in a state of extreme emotional tension. She doesn't know what to call the name of what we are doing. Do you know this is why some ladies now run away from any guy. It's not that they are bad or they don't want a relationship. They just don't want all of this heartbreak. Brothers, now you are a victim. You like the girl, but she likes you too. But she's running away because of the accumulation of emotional pain she's gone through. As a result of a brother coming, am I coming on? No, no, no. It must change the most hot in all this i tell you sincerely are the ladies do you know why because in their attempt to be virtuous and faithful by the time nurse is coming to tabitha tabitha positions herself and in her mind she wants to honor what nurse is doing because she knows that he's coming and every Body language is giving shows that he's coming to her. Are we together? 
and now she she risks herself to make sure that she avoids any other guy because she's positioning herself to be committed which is supposed to be a very good thing for a responsible lady but now she drives the guys positions herself nurse is close today tomorrow he's back and this happens for many years only to leave her in pain and untold disappointment is god speaking to us now bless you my dear thank you clap for her please let's appreciate her so there must be clarity now please let me balance this it doesn't mean after koinonia a brother just looks at you and says shaham i say well, what is the name of what we are doing say it now ah that's too early you don't become too forward on people just because of that or somebody just sent you a wonderful text it may even be a valentine present and, mm, what are we doing no that's not what i'm teaching you but i'm saying over a period of time there should be definiteness there should be definiteness i've seen certain brothers get close to certain ladies and most times they come and meet me i joke a lot with them and i say ah the way you are looking at this lady say ah apostle drew true yeah i like this guy said oh she's a nice lady I'm, i'll be praying for you you know i can crack jokes with them and the day he asks out and the lady says she's doing I, for me i'm happy when two of them come i say i'm, I'm really happy the people will make a great couple god bless you not the one that the lady comes to me and says apostle there are three guys a b c whereas the b she's talking about came and met me already and said there's one sister her name is d so the sister is classifying the guy among her suitors whereas he has even come to tell me that the person i'm looking at is not even this so the lady is there thinking he is part of those who love her please let's clarify all these loose ends must be tied this valentine in the name of jesus christ definiteness of roles roles this is very important who can i okay tabitha can you come again or any you are tired ba? okay be writing you come it's your turn now come definiteness of roles now watch this i'm married to this lady now this is my wife listen who are we in this marriage what what are her roles let's even start from a relationship this also applies to marriage see when there is no clarity of roles there will be tension are we together it's obvious that one of our roles is to give me children i don't have a womb so that's not something we have to explain to one another she knows but what of other things who is the chief financial burden bearer in this relationship this applies also to roommates oh you are a roommate okay are you a roommate by association or you're a roommate by contract is it that you paid the money to or the generosity of a friend put you there we are business partners what what is your role in this business is god speaking to us now oh we are in this ministry together what is your role co-founders assistant a member who is just a faithful follower what are you there must be definiteness of roles nobody will come and just sit down there is a place a mark for heads of department nobody will just come and sit down if, if he sits down it's not even them someone else will tap him and say no 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 there are seats that are reserved because of clarity and definiteness this section is for worship team that section is for media there is clarity definiteness of roles in this relationship who cooks two of us you when i cook is it a right or is help when you pay school fees for the children is it you, you see there must be clarity we sit down and we guess roles and that's what brings tension so the woman is collecting three hundred thousand, and the man is collecting hundred thousand. it still does not mean because she's collecting three hundred thousand, she must be the one to pay school fees for children it is never never her responsibility any woman who does that does that out of love and a communication of virtue it's not a right because the bible says any man that cannot cater the hallmark of manhood and masculinity is provision and protection any man that cannot provide any man that cannot protect in this home 
I am the priest of the house. I oversee the spiritual growth and the progress of my wife, my children, and all who are with me. In this house, my wife is not a house girl. My wife is not a concubine. Are we together? My wife is not whatever it is. So my mother will not come or my mother-in-law and come and make my wife look like a third class citizen. I love my mother. I love my mother-in-law in and all of that. But we have become one with this lady. And I'm not going to watch anybody truncate on her just because of loyalty. Now, we come from cultures that have all kinds of perspectives about marriage. There are cultures that really don't give their children. Mother and father and all these people are still in control of the home. Because it's tension. Is God speaking to us now? What is her role? What is her role? There are families where the woman does not have the right to authorize anything in the family. Mommy, I want to take that yogurt. Say, please so go and ask your father. You see that? Because the impression the man has given is that I am king of kings and lord of lords. And not even this woman can usurp on my authority. A man can have seven cars in the house, yet the wife is still taking transport. Have you seen people like that? Taking transport. She does not know. And then you find out that his friend's wife is coming from the airport and he will send the son or a driver with one of the car to go and pick her. Why would she not say you are having an affair with the friend's wife? Hallelujah. Your wife is in the house. Listen, we are going to pray. What I'm saying is very important. Your wife is in the house and all of a sudden a strange woman comes and you see her with measuring tape, measuring chairs in the parlor. Madam, who are you? Mm -hmm. Or oh, God sent me. I don't have anything to tell you. In my house? I'm a tailor, if you want to know. I'm trying to measure some things. I want to make tablecloth and all of that. I said, but I, at least you are supposed to tell me. You didn't even greet me. Please, madam, don't talk to me. Go and talk to your husband. The woman is right. The husband is supposed to say, when you go to that house, my wife is there. Make sure you greet her and talk to her. I'm saying this because that's the family many of us came from. And that's the mindset we have. It's already reflecting on our relationships. We are embarrassed to allow the woman take her place. Hallelujah. There are, there, are, there are some ladies in this place. Because of how close and knitted I am. When they come to my place, there are people who come to my place and they are shaking and sitting down because of the level of relationship. There are certain people when they come, they don't even ask me anything. They go to the fridge and just open. There's one of the ladies here, I will not mention her name. She knows herself. When she steps into this place with her friends, she just goes open and she's, she may be giving them more. And she'll say, this is my father's house. And I just sit down and watch. Brothers have hot ladies more than they can imagine. Sometimes doing it sincerely, God is speaking to us that we need to make amends tonight. There are many people following online. There are people inside and outside. God is showing you the loose ends while there may be tension in your relationship. The lady suspects any guy that comes around you because you have not clarified her position in your life. The wife sees every man that comes, whether it is from your office, and she says, Madam, what do you want? Oh, it's Ogara. He's not around. Please go. Because she's thinking you are coming to wreck her home. The man has a responsibility. You see a husband and a wife in church. They don't even sit down together. The man hates it. You will find one small girl and just sit down. And they say, turn to your neighbor. And you see an elderly man just trying to look. and say, you turn now. Our... And the wife is watching from where she is. The man is driving. When he's driving with his wife, you will know it's his wife because he will turn his face one side. Shouting and yelling at her. Embarrassing her. But when he carries his daughter's friends, he's dropping them somewhere. How are you? Have you eaten? Were, we just passed a restaurant. Are you sure you want? Daddy can buy food for you. It's not daddy anything. There is something he's suffering that if he's not humble enough to address, 
some see let me tell you something some men may not sleep around they may not do certain things but there is an affinity for unfaithfulness it may never lead to immorality but it's an they enjoy if you enjoy the presence of any other person than your wife something is wrong many women have done well but thou excellest them all imagine looking at you and telling you many women have done well eh? but you excel them all she will be happy she may not do it now because we have, we have there's video camera but she'll be happy there's no lady i know who will not be happy brothers could this be why your relationship is almost tearing apart husbands fathers could this be why your marriage is tearing apart there's no flavor because your wife is a slave she's happier being in koinonia than going back home and let me tell you the trouble with this kind of men and women except you are in their house you will never believe that's what they are doing because the impression they give outside is very different that's why you see them saying we have a man of god apostle joshua selman a father indeed very humble and the wife is just nodding and saying you people don't know what you are saying awards after awards and i may think because i'm collecting those awards i'm a good father i may even be counseling certain people this is how you should do your marriage whereas yours is in a mess i live to praise your name and i have no fear of what tomorrow brings sing it just one time i live to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, my dear. I already began to answer session three. Give me five minutes and I'm done and we'll pray. This is the discussion now. What could be wrong? A, if you are struggling to love your partner. Please listen. I know our time is on, but I want everybody to please pay attention just get this because god is about to answer many people's questions right now what could be wrong if i am in a relationship with amaka but i am struggling to love her she's born again i'm born again is god speaking to us what could be wrong if shalom is in a relationship with benga and she cannot love him or if they are married many couples many people go through this and they never study what is it a message from god is it a message from the devil is it a sign please hear this what could be wrong if you are struggling to love your partner listen your partner can be the person you are going out with or it can be your husband or wife or business partner whatever it is this is what can be wrong listen what could be wrong if you are struggling to love your partner number one it can be that you are unequally yoked that could be why you are struggling to love the person you are in a relationship with somebody that is not you are unequally yoked he's not in christ you see that he does not have the value system of the kingdom or maybe when you got married you got married carelessly now don't feel bad please especially for those of us who are married you got married carelessly you had a challenging past and now you are married to a man who you are now born again but you are living with this guy he's obviously not born again you find out that there is a problem connecting with him so the first explanation could be because you are unequally yoked number two what could be wrong if you are struggling to love your partner still still on the same point i'm giving you the second reason the second reason can be please listen and pay attention carefully the second reason can be that your spirit has picked a signal of danger and is communicating that signal to you especially when there is no physical reason to necessitate that kind of fear ah, i'm giving you i'm giving you a big secret that will help many of you tonight people have come to me for counseling i know this brother loves god i know this sister loves god they are all people here they may even be workers maybe even leaders and they start a relationship 
or about to start a relationship or are even married and you find out as a brother this lady come um, um, Martha I love Martha all right or I'm in a relationship with Martha but every time we go on in that relationship it's like there is an invisible force of repulsion something I still don't know what it is if it's beauty she's fine if it's to love God she loves God if it's commitment she's virtuous but I don't know what is driving me away from her let me tell you it no longer is a physical thing there is a spiritual contention I want to explain something to you please open your eyes now and understand what the spirit is saying matter may be coming from a spiritual background where there are still spiritual things to resolve and my spirit man has picked up that thing that there could be barrenness in the future there could be certain things in the future are we together now and so while I am fighting to love her there is a resistance God is saying your commitment should now be to break that thing not just to think of marriage when it is resolved the force will leave and you find out all of a sudden after one miracle service your love for her stepped into a new dimension many of us are fighting something God is speaking he has been speaking for months I love you I love you you are not opening your eyes this night God is showing you it's a different thing if this lady is not virtuous but there is no known reason why I should not love her. Are we together now? It's a sign. We ignore it. But it's a language in the spirit. There could be foundational things, brothers and sisters, that may be in her family. And that's what the spirit of God, that's why there is that unrest. The moment she tells you, okay, um, Mike, when will you go and see my parents all of a sudden your heart is beating but this is what you were prepared for all the while listen every time you sense any unrest prolonged unrest in a relationship don't keep quiet about it there is an issue to be resolved it may not have anything to do with the person but it has to do with the spiritual influence that connects to the person are we together now please don't feel bad 90 percent of the people who get married and the woman changes or the man changes or you see them a prolonged period you know barrenness or one kind of thing like that the man will say i kept picking these signals i know people who have cried one week to their wedding as if 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 there is a way i can break this i prayed for many people who were married the moment they got married the man cannot even meet with his wife as a husband and wife no affection no nothing he cannot explain why so he will go out to try to sleep with another lady to verify and finds out that a house help in the house who is not even any standard to compare with his wife he has almost an addiction for her that means that he still has the passion for a woman but it can never be translated to madam something is wrong what could be wrong if you are losing affection it could be a message now that may not mean the relationship is not of God it may mean God is saying your priority now should be to stand together and challenge some things ladies this may be the reason why certain brothers came close to you and you found out that for reasons they don't have the courage to tell you they are halting because they are picking signals some brothers God is answering your question now as to why you plan asking that lady out since September but right now you don't want anybody to come around her but sincerely that fear you have prayed and fasted about it nothing has changed it's a message I'm interpreting that message to you right now is God helping us tonight it can be the same thing for the lady now I used to know a lady who there was a very strong covenant that was done she did not even know as in it was a strong covenant the mother went somewhere and did all kinds of things we believe in the blood of Jesus but we are not unaware of the strategies of darkness all kinds of demonic dedications now listen there was a track record the first person she entered a relationship with it didn't reach two years he died she's a sincere lady she's born again but that guy died true story are we together now the second person she entered a relationship with he didn't die but his finances crashed from the day he stepped into her life i'm telling you 
this guy as in he crashed like two pieces now this other brother they were going out but this guy kept finding out that it's, it's like i don't know what it's like an invisible force i'm trying to be proud of this lady i'm trying to love her look god is answering somebody's question tonight I'm trying to sometimes the lady does not even understand or the guy does not understand and the lady is helpless she doesn't have the courage to explain this to anybody because people say you even have a guy and you are doing smell smell but the lady is telling you something is wrong this could be it and I told him I said what's the issue I, said, no. I spoke to the lady when she came I began to talk with her and I found out that there were some strong things that needed to be broken and shattered believe me thank god they are married but had that guy married that lady like that he would have been surprised it would no longer be an issue of love his life would have scattered there are men who have entered into the lives of ladies and they brought in certain atmospheres from the day he entered her life mysterious sickness this is why we pray for people I believe in ministering deliverance to people Lord. my concept of deliverance is very biblical but don't let anybody tell you it's unnecessary it's not just about you there must be a separation are we together let's see thank you so that could be one of the reasons why you are struggling to love your partner in fact once there is a struggle aside from the fact that it may not be the will of God that is usually the next area to check I'm teaching you right now because some of you will go back quickly some of you cannot wait for koinonia to finish so you run and call your friend and say i found the reason why you are always complaining to us that this guy is nice he buys you everything you are even thinking of how to dodge valentine this sunday because it's like when you are with him it's as if you are naked you cannot even tell what is happening to you yet you are supposed to love him so people told you that's how it, it starts just just keep doing it one day it will be real it's a lie sit down and flog the issue there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. I saw a pattern in my family as I began to grow up. People make it in life, but they suffer. You know what I say, suffer. That language called ease, that thing does, I didn't see it exist in my family. I saw people, something that can take you two months, you can spend 12 years, but you will achieve it. I looked at a few of my cousins and I saw them following that pattern. From my dad's side, listen, this is a very serious issue. My father is the only, not even the most, the only successful person. I come from a family of missionaries. I saw a pattern with my cousins from the, from the maternal side. I found out that all the firstborns were males but there was always something a very tragic situation that will happen in their life either you will get somebody pregnant before marriage or something when I saw those things I said no 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 I shared with you my testimony born again filled with the Holy Spirit doing ministry but still being oppressed by demon spirits in the night my own was so bad it's not that I will sleep and mind I will see it but light came to me some of you are carrying atmospheres that are driving friends that's why everybody who comes close to you notices that something leaves them jonah entered boat people lost money they lost properties because of his presence the ark of god entered the house of obed edom there is a presence you are carrying that may be responsible for what is going on in your relationship I want to stop here i have three other points but maybe next next week before we take on that I, if, if if there's time i may touch on that because i think we have we have gotten to a place that represents somewhere to pray on are we together break every chain break every chain break every chain yeah. 
Break every chain. Please get set to pray, not to go. Get set to pray. We really have to pray. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Sing it to him. To break every chain. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. We will start the prayer with this last point. I like you to pray. You are going to challenge every atmosphere in your life that is stopping your relationship, your marriage from moving to the next level. I like you to pray. Lord, what is that atmosphere in my life that drives everyone who comes close to me? No one wants to be my friend. No one wants to marry me. There is an atmosphere. I challenge that foundation. Lift your voice and pray. Break every chain. Pray, Koinonia. This Valentine period, I contend in the name of Jesus. There must be change. That repulsive atmosphere that drives men from me, that drives women from me, that drives business partners from me, that drives ministerial colleagues, I challenge it. I challenge it by the blood of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Listen. I like you to pray. When the man who was born blind, Jesus passed a certain city and they saw a man who had been born blind. Listen. They said, who seen that this man was born blind? Was it him or his father? The disciples knew that something a generation can do can affect a generation. I like you to pray and say whatever was done in my lineage that has an implication on my marriage, my relationships, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. In the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Pray, Koinonia. This is your liberty tonight. I've entered 10 relationships. None of them has worked. People promise to marry me and disappoint me. Business partners come and they run away. Helpers come and they run away. Oh, I break that chain. I break that chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still going to pray. Listen. I have seen human beings carry certain patterns. I used to know somebody who when he comes into your life for the first five months he will bless you but after that time you must fight with him something must happen and tear that relationship i saw that happen in many relationships every time god wants to lift you god will send him when he comes into your life know that a season of lifting has come but as far as you are lifted He's the same person who will crash you back. Some of us are like that. Listen, I'd like you to pray in the next two minutes. I know our time is gone. But please, if you go home late tonight and you are free forever, it's a good bargain. We are going to pray for the next two minutes. I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and prophesy. Pray and prophesy. Oh, I break this. I break this, I break this, this yoke. It dies from my life. 
it dies from my business it dies from my ministry in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Now listen. Please put down your hands. The last prayer point. I tell you, I feel fire in this room. Listen. The last prayer. We may not be able to take others. Let's respect time. But the last prayer point. You are going to pray passionately. Sisters, listen. It's not a sign of desperation to pray and call for the man, not any man. You don't need every man. Please. You need the man. Brothers, there are some of us. Do you know that many of us, our life partners have come to pass us? But something drove them away. Some of you, your life partners are here, but they cannot see you. There are many ladies here who want to settle down this year. Please help them. There are many ladies who want to settle down. It's not a sin. There are many brothers who want to settle down. It's not a sin. Please. Put your ego behind and pray. You see me joining you to pray. Put your ego and pray. And say, Lord, whoever should be in my life and is not in my life, I call them forth now. Whoever should not be in my life and is in my life, I release them right now. Pray, 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 pray. Any man, any woman in my life today, who should not be in my life? Lord, I release that person. I release that person. Any business ally who should not be part of my business, I release that person. Anybody I'm in a relationship with who is not my husband, I release the person. Any lady I'm not in a relationship with who should not be my wife, I release that person. Pray. Any brother who should appear in my life, I call him forth. Any sister who should appear in my life, I call her forth. Every helper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please forgive me for eating up your time. But the Lord is ministering a prayer request for me. We are going to do it this way. Brothers, you are going to pray. And tear down every wall of lack of fruitfulness and advancement. Listen. There are many brothers whose destinies and advancement are tied down. They will never believe it. Because that's what is stopping some of us from getting married. You are going to pray that and prophesy advancement. Every lady here, you are going to lay your hands on your womb. While the brothers pray, you are going to pray to attack barrenness and unfruitfulness. Use your womb as a point of contact. Pray, pray, put your hands on your stomach and pray. Sisters, pray. Every spell, every enchantment of unfruitfulness, of barrenness, of lack of advancement, I cause it by the blood of Jesus. I cause it by the blood of Jesus. I cause it by the blood of Jesus. Brothers, pray, pray, pray. I'm making progress. I must make progress. I attack every spirit 
of stagnation growing old without making progress I come against you in the name of Jesus I hear the church falling I hear the church I hear the church Hallelujah. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Oh, I wish we had time. I wish we had time. There are prayers I would have led you into that would have turned some chains into pieces, I tell you. There are different kinds of prayers, brothers and sisters. You must pray strategically when it comes to commanding breakthrough. I did this for my life. I refuse to let some of you, your background alone, you can see all kinds of deliverance happening to people all around. Because this is a serious issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray one more prayer. Lord, from this Valentine, you are changing my life. From this one. This is the last Valentine that I will go through in this frustration. Maritally, whatever it is, I'd like you to pray. Please, take advantage of seasons. Our time is gone, but pray. Don't say it does not concern me. Married or not, open your mouth and pray. La cata prata scala barata scaria barato scopos Om brapa cata prete che deve bene bos Pro che deve bene le bocco sotto branda scala baria da va Rapa cata barata 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 sempre che deve bene le bos Rotto scopos che da va de cresci che deve va Please lift your hands everybody Lift your hands everyone inside and outside Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Hear me. Anyone here carrying any atmosphere that has been programmed by darkness to hinder your husband or your wife, your business partners, your ministerial helpers from entering into your life, I challenge that atmosphere right now in the name of jesus christ i challenge that atmosphere right now in the name of jesus christ hear me every sister here desirous of settling down with a godly man not a foolish man in the name of jesus christ we call for that man into your life we call for that man into your life we call for that man into your life. I pray for every brother here. You have struggled. People may not know, but you have struggled. In the name of Jesus, that struggle comes to an end tonight. Please help that brother. That struggle comes to an end tonight. That struggle comes to an end tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me anyone here who is a victim of geography your geographical location has implicated you spiritually 
Shikaparato kosubatariada Lande karaskapa Skatarata nabatia I stand tonight Under this apostolic anointing And in the name of the Lord Jesus I break that influence from your life I break that influence from your life Shekete-te-te-te-te-rekotosia I break that influence from your life Every disfavor that appears every year in your life a certain period of your life it repeats itself when things are about to happen well when a brother comes to you just when he's about to propose something happens when a sister is about to tell you yes something happens right now i change it tonight in the name of jesus hallelujah now listen last prayer there are brothers here there are sisters here who are ready to take their relationships to marriage but fear lack of courage what am i doing will how will i take this brother to my parents will they think i'm not responsible brothers i prophesy to you between now and april in the name that is above all names take this as a prophecy the progress you will make in your life will shock everyone mocking your god I release the spirit of faith upon you I release courage upon you every fear 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 I curse it in the name of Jesus Hallelujah! lift your hands and give Jesus praise we have to stop here I wish we had time dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the phase of development lord grant me the discipline